me and Terry are here at Built Wise Structures doing another mobile home tour. Let's see what they talking about. See if they got something that Virginia Homes didn't have. We self see. And so I'm telling you this because when we walk out there, you're gonna see some stored units and materials and you're like, where's the production? You gotta go around the corner. I'll mm -hmm. take you there. Um, our, we're gonna go out, we're gonna go over here where we start production. We're gonna follow production in that direction. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna see various homes that we have uh, that are lined up here uh, of different types. And so you're gonna see a little bit <coughs> of everything. Everything, everything, everything. You're gonna see everything from Rob Howard's little one module net zero energy ready to a 3,400 square foot house going to Texas to two um, virtually identical build to rent units um, and, and a little bit of everything. So Cape's going to North Carolina, uh, you name it. So you can see all that. So so we welcome all of this. this. <laughs> but yes, they got And the way my way to set it up, I don't need you trying to catch me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it, it's a fairly safe place. It's a fairly busy place. Um, and uh, we're gonna go out there and see all that and have a good time. Let, let me comment about this before we go over into where we're actually doing production. Um, just a comment about materials from the very beginning. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, you see lumber here. Okay, lumber's lumber, right? This lumber is interesting. When it arrived here, um, we stuck the lumber with a moisture meter and checked the moisture content before we permitted the lumber to be unloaded. And the reason we did that is we wanted to make sure that this lumber is dry. And so we know that we are receiving dry lumber and it stays dry. Very important. We are, we are very protective of the materials we receive so that we assure that they are uh, up to the specs we want and that we don't damage them in the process of handling them. I'll comment about the drywall over there. I have been in plenty of modular plants and the drywall is stacked up and it looks like this. <laughs> and you know, it's hard to make a straight wall when the drywall is stacked like this. You know, it just does not work. So you're going to see, I hope, that you're going to see us being careful there because it's hard to build a good house if you start with materials that aren't where you need it to be. So having said that, let's go over in the production area. existing building versus uh, greenfield whatever this was an existing building we have actually done over a million dollars of building improvements in this building it may not look like it but for example you see that tan cinder block wall that extends all the way across the there so we took that wall out and you see the new gray steel there that we put in so we just take more Hopefully modules will come through here, that column will go away, a bunch of different things. So that's what we've done with our building. Uh, and the other thing is that when we got here, we actually started building modules and we did not have a door big enough to get them out of as we were building. And we knew that. So then we, we actually created the opening and it took a longer time to get the door 
so we built ourselves something that looked kind of like a medieval castle door. It was this big wood door with rollers on it and we would open it <laughs> and take the modules out and then we would close it back just like the, like a castle door. So we, there's a lot of expense if you even have an existing building and modifying it to be what we need. Our biggest modifications are in reinforcing all the columns be able to hang cranes on them. And if you look over here where we have crane systems, you'll see that most of the columns look new. They're either new or reinforced or, or whatever to be able to hang the cranes on them to be able to drop them. The lights in this shop are on, a, on motion control. We didn't turn the lights on o off over there. It's just that we don't have anybody over there right now. That's why it's dark. But a couple of comments here. We're, we're, uh, we don't have anything on that floor table. We did yesterday, and it's here now. But let me explain what the process is for building the shop. We, on that table, build a floor system. That floor system is, uh, generally speaking, 2x10 floor joists with a double 2x10 rim joist. We build it on a level table, square it up, and then we, the adhesive I mentioned, uh, we put that adhesive on the top of each joist and put the floor decking on and mechanically fast. That locks in the shape, the squareness of that floor. And that has to be a precise squareness and it has to be precise dimensions. Because on this table over there is where we build walls. And we build walls to define dimensions and drawings. And then we take these cranes and we set these walls to the floor system. Before we set onto the floor system, we have one other thing we do with the floor. We put it in elevated racks, those yellow racks there, so that we can get underneath and do any underfloor wiring or plumbing. We do that and mount the casters on it and set it back down and then bring it over here and set the walls. The reason we do a lot of underfloor wiring and plumbing is that that saves on the distance that the wiring and the plumbing runs. And that becomes significant for two things. One, wiring is, wire in particular is costly. But the other reason is from a plumbing standpoint, uh, one of the net zero energy ready requirements for plumbing is that your plumbing be as short a run as possible. And that's part of the requirement. So we can do that as a matter of course. You'll notice that these walls that we have here are, these walls are built the reverse of what a site-built home would be. A site-built home, you would build the wall with the sheathing on it, and then one of the last things you would do is the drywall. Mm -hmm. We put the drywall on first, and the sheathing last. It allows us to basically build from the inside out. That gives us some advantages. One is that we're able to completely seal around any you know, penetrations here. And we do other things for improved sealing of this. So that's what we do there. Okay. So let me pause and ask any questions about this. I just wondered. About the small system and yeah, because I was so wondering why, yeah. you why it. is it so thick? This is a two by six wall. And we can do a two by six wall. We do a two by four. No, don't do that. Um, what's that? Don't do two by four. Well, it, <laughs> we do what the client wants. Uh, now, there's an interesting story behind this house. This house right here is going to um, Pine, North Carolina. And it's climate zone four. And 
so two by six walls are necessary to meet the res check required. Res check is the thermal envelope calculation. So required. two by six is necessary to meet res check for spruce pine. All well and good. We built this house previously for Knoxville, Tennessee. Shipped it to Knoxville, and that's climate zone three. And we were fine. We didn't pass res check in climate zone four because our gable end walls were two by four. So we changed our gable end walls to two by six and we met res check. That's how, that's how, you know, when we talk about thermal performance yeah. envelope, et cetera, all of these things come into play. There are a number of things that happen for North Carolina and we'll probably adopt them for all of them. North Carolina requires that we have a bead of caulk underneath this, this bottom plate here when we set it on the floor and that we caulk between walls when we, you know, exterior walls to walls. So we've done all of that here. But did that answer your question? Yes, I just wanted to point it out because when you see this and it's going to be traveling, obviously you're knowing that this wall system is structurally sound, right? Not all of the, this isn't not how thick frame. Right. So this door is sold like this, right. to this, this, this high quality. Well, it, then we have a very good reason because it's traveling. Correct. But we're, we're liberally using adhesives. We are adhering the drywall to the studs. We will ultimately adhere the sheathing to this stud on this side. We're using adhesives everywhere. Adhesives greatly improve the structural rigidity of the home. So, and what type of insulation are you using? We're using a bat insulation. We can use pretty much whatever you want. Do you have a preference? <laughs> That's the one you're using. That's good, but I haven't seen other sellers. I haven't seen where the adhesive is back behind there, you know, attached to the. Yeah. It makes a difference as far as drywall cracking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that piece of this is lifetime sticky. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Well, it's yeah. <laughs> and in fact, <laughs> you get what you don't. Be a fan. Yeah, if you if you were trying to take this drywall off of that stud, mm -hmm. there's gonna be drywall that sticks on the stud and then you're gonna have to scrape it off yeah, yeah. that cut it. Once it's done, it's done. Yeah, and I think the other thing to point out about the design is look at the size of the window. Look at the size of the door. When people imagine modular, they think, you know, the general, what is a 36 inch window, not being able to do something of this size and to be able to travel with it. The design, that's the difference of how modular has transformed the way that we're building and designing the platform. This is like extraordinary. This wasn't like even like 10 years ago. Nobody was going to be doing these big windows and doors and these opportunities. So definitely makes, uh, makes it beautiful. Yeah, it's well designed. Now this house is actually what's called a cake design. This will have a 12-12 roof pitch on it. And, and it has stairs that go up there. And once the roof is raised, the builder will finish out the cake part on site. Cake we, yes. Mm -hmm. Same we are going to walk in this direction here. The other thing that we do, what we do in this station is on that elevated platform, we put drywall face down. And when we put drywall face down on the platform, we build the roof system on top of it. And that, we have an elevated platform so we can get underneath through the drywall into the We didn't pick that roof system up. Dimensional accuracy is everything in this business. Build a floor over here, walls over there, roof and ceiling system over here. Everything has to fit together. And so that, that just becomes essential for the discipline we have here to maintain dimensional accuracy as well as squares. Um, so I do want to point out also when you look at that roof system, that is that 
folding type of system that you saw in the video. The hinge is over here. You'll see that hinge right there. And the other hinge for the knee wall is right there. So that we on site, we will raise the knee, and the knee wall will come down and support that. So, so does each section stay in their, stay in their um, areas until it's completed? Or yeah, it's and then it moves on to okay. the other thing. Correct. Yeah. But all of those walls are drawn, and we are building those walls to a precise wall drawing. So that's the, we're building them exactly where they need to be. This house is another design. That's the case. 12, 12. And then we're going to go down here and see another design. I was just being asked, why do we have this? And when we build dormers, we want to make sure that the angle of the dormer is exactly meets the angle of the roof. So what we built was a 712 roof here so that when we built 712 dormers, they exactly fit. On top of it, over there, we have a 1212 pitch that we built on top of it so that when we wiring and the plumbing in the walls. We've got all of the drywall on, and you'll notice a lot of the drywall finish is already pretty much done, as well as some initial painting. On the, this right here is one of the areas which will be another house. So on that, I want to comment here about window installation. Um, this is a standard window installation, installation, but you may notice that the house wrap at the top of the flange is pulled back. You'll go to a lot of building sites and you'll see that the builder just cuts the neck and cuts the house wrap in top bottom of the side, right? Don't do that. And here's the reason. The reason we're doing it this way is because we will install that window, we will flash the window flange against the open speed at the top, and then we will lap that house wrap down on top of that. Key Why moisture. would we do that? Keep moisture from going in. Yes, because if water ever gets behind the house wrap, if the house wrap is just right in there, you will have water in your house. And this brings up an important point. We only get one chance to do things like install windows correctly, install doors correctly, and a number of different things. So we want to do it correctly as to one to give you a good house, but also to minimize the financial risk to us of having warranty problems down the road. There is a manufacturer on the West Coast, I believe they're in the They did a job 
and they incorrectly installed 280 windows. Ooh. Mm -hmm. The job went out to the site, this commercial job, high rise, all the siding on it, all the trim on the inside, everything. And then they're like, we have to go back, get all that siding off, take the window out, reinstall those windows correctly. So that is the type of thing that we have to be very, very careful to do. So everybody's eyes are on that sort of thing here in this place. Um, I just want to comment a little about this gable impact here. Also, so we had a video that, where I said no sledgehammer involved with our gable impact. The reason is we have raised the tree. We have the gable impact in there and it's too tight to grab the allows it to push down. So we know it fits. So that when this gets on the site, and the builder raises the roof and puts this up there, we know it fits. There's not going to be any, wow, you know, they built that gable end panel in another part of the plant and they never fitted it, and all like that. And um, having been a builder, I've been on the receiving end of some of that. It's not what you want. Again, it's oriented to the quality of the product and the ease on site for the builder. This shingle right here is the highest win rate shingle that you can buy. Now, we could to try to save a few pennies, say, oh, we're going to use a Class H, which is the highest rated on the thousand, and then we're going to use a Class H on this and all like that. We don't do that. And we don't do that, um, one, because one, we get a pretty good price with the highest rated. But secondly, because when we talk about quality of product, one of the really great ways to have something incorrect is to have two things that look the same that get used in different places. So we've got one class of shingles for over here, one class over here, and they're the same color and they look the same. Eventually, we're going to make a mistake. So everything is the highest rating and, and that sort of thing. So just, just so you know. And yes, we do work to buy at a very attractive price. So. Do y'all ever do metal roofs? Metal roofs can be done, but because our roof folds up, it's done on site. So what we do is we prepare for that metal roof to be done. Because that is our paper. And the reason I mention that is that um, we are spray painting trims, doors, window trim, that sort of thing. We build all our window trim on a fixture, take it in here and spray paint it, and then come and set it in place. So that way we know that it's dimensionally correct and we're not trying to piece it around each window. So we get that that efficiency there. Um, so I mentioned that. This, I'm going to comment on this house here. The one that we saw just up there uh, a little ways uh, when we first started, I mentioned it's a cape. That one and that one are identical structurally. They're, and what we've done is we've moved this one over here where we have a higher head height and we're able to raise the roof. And what they're doing upstairs is they are up there doing the wiring and the plumbing and then the war decking that's necessary to prepare it for, for then being a finished space. The other thing you see there is that the modules are together so we're test fitting to make sure that the alignment of all the openings and all like that of the modules is correct. Watch your step on that one. <coughs> Two okay. bedrooms and a bathroom. Up there. Up there. Yep. Wow. Two bed there'll be a bedroom on each end and there'll be a bathroom in the middle. Okay. Oh. Right. Storage. When you're talking about something that is small and efficient, cost efficient. Those 
Those are going to be build to rent houses here in upstate South Carolina. They're about 1,150 square feet, three bedrooms, two baths. We can walk right over there and you can take a look at them and see what they look like. You're welcome to go in, but just go in and out on this step just because that's a heavy step. We don't want to get blown out their knees. No, that's the bedroom, the primary bedroom. That right over there is the living room. And I will ask one more thing. Don't put your hands on the trim. No hands on the walls, no hands on the trim. <clears throat> All right, a um, couple of comments. These are, are, everything you see with this tan colored siding, whether it's board and batten or a lap siding, is part of the Texas house, which is six modules. The lower floors are 10 foot, thank you, uh, <laughs> 10 foot high here with HVAC system in it and all like that. Uh, all of this, this is a total of a 3,400 square foot house. Every bathroom is mild bathroom. The kitchen is very high end. And yes, we are supplying the appliances on this one for <laughs> what the client wants. Um, and you'll see those appliances here, which are very, very high end appliances. Um, what I'd like to do is let's step in here. Eric, we want to come in for a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got a light.
Nothing inexpensive about much of anything here. Okay. You said 400, correct? 450, and you divide it by 3,400, so you shouldn't be at that time. No, this is a That's stick, a stick build. build amount. This same house, stick build. Yeah. 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 There's your profit, mm -hmm. right? But right. you still, but you got, you know, again, also, let's just think about this. That's just a house. You got That's transport set yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. there, there will be. It, there'll be a little less than that, but in some of the same. But range. still, it's going to be less than yeah. the deal. So, oh, yeah. 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 the the other things that I think are important to recognize in this house is that this house has the HVAC system installed. It is a high velocity system, where you see the these little round things here with blue tape on them. Those are the small ducts for the high velocity HVAC system. The ductwork is in the space between the two floors here. And we've installed the air handler, the ductwork, all of that. So um, anyway, just sort of gives you, and this is, this is on the high end of the spectrum. And I will tell you that we're going to have to be very careful in a number of things that we do with this home. This has, as I said, engineered hardwood floors here which are subject to shrink swell mm -hmm. with changes in the environment. So this morning, early this morning, I ordered six portable air conditioning units. And so while this is in storage here, before our customer takes this, we will close these up, we'll put the portable air conditioners in with a, obviously running the hose out for condensate. And we will air condition each one of these modules to protect the school. Hmm. It's just something we have to do. So, when you're transporting, do you keep in mind weather? So if it's not, do you hold off on shipping? We, so you know we look at it. We look at it. Um, from here to Austin, Texas is a long way. Mm -hmm. So you're probably going to run into a shower somewhere. But we look at it too. And we're very cautious of it. Uh, the biggest issue we have with transport uh, is that the roads in Mississippi and Louisiana are atrocious. <laughs> and we've learned a few things there. Um, we have to actually secure the countertops better than you would normally do, for just site built, because the vibration on those roads can cause countertops to come those. Mm. We do not install toilets in these that are going to Texas because the vibration of the toilet going up and down breaks the toilet flange every mm. time, every time, every time. So there's some of these things that we had to do just to assure that this arrives in good condition there. Um, I'll mention one other thing about this. Uh, this is not a hard set on site, but it's non-trivial. Let's put it that way. Um, the site 
installation crew that this builder has. And this is house number five of this basic design. That installation crew was not on their game on the first one, and they never got on their game on the second, third, and fourth. <laughs> so we are actually going to take that set crew that you saw in the video in Black Mountain and some key players from here, wow. and we are going to go and we are going to set this house for them. Now, is that expensive for them? Yes, it is. Is it a better deal than some of the damage that the setter they had uh, caused? Yes, it is. So, yeah, ultimately it's about value and, and us being, serving the customer uh, there. What so. size is this box? 16. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. So anything over 16, you have to get flagger, just so you know, so there's additional transportation <clears throat> costs, especially if you're doing a 20 foot. Not all states will let you travel a 20 foot box in their transportation areas, right? Well, I will speak to that because I have first-hand experience. And that is that if you're in Georgia, South Carolina, or North Carolina, 16 is the max. And the only reason I say that is that um, all of those states, their departments of transportation have all talked. And they are just scared to death of opening the door for anything beyond 16. So 16 is going to be the max. Now, when you go west of the Mississippi, the term wild, wild west, <laughs> 18, 20, you know, take the whole road, whatever it takes, they do it all the time out there. But here uh, in the southeast, 16 is really all the time. So each one of your modules, how do you protect the outside of them for travel? We, we wrap them like a boat. Yeah. So, you know, so, and really we don't, we seldom have damage in transit. Um, you know, I mentioned the vibratory damage is going across Mississippi and Louisiana, but that, that's about it. They're traveling on our carriers, which are special units that we have. Uh, and they're they're very they're very rigid, so they support this uh, very very well. They have outriggers that support the outer wind band and all like that. So when you get the place going in New Mexico, you don't have to worry about Louisiana and uh, Mississippi. Do you? Correct. And New Mexico <laughs> will eventually take this business. There's, I don't think there's any question about that. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, now that brings up the other thing is that Texas certification is is also non-trivial. It was a real Bear to get Texas certification. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're proud that we have it here, um, but we've got to get New Mexico up and running for New Mexico certification and then Texas certification yeah. to be able to build there. So, Darren, anything you want to add about this? We're going to go down this one step and back into this next unit over here. look at the large tile features and the built-in into the wall. Again, not common. Um, also, I love that they have 
this lip on here because there has been zero entry showers that have all these issues with water um, with going in and out. So a lot of great craftsmanship, and not to mention tile selection. I don't think I've ever seen tile selection like this in a modular company to this level. pressurizes the room, the window whistles, mm -hmm. you know? And so uh, our windows don't whistle. So it's not, it's not only that they don't whistle, it's a tighter envelope. You're not getting 
that and then another builder was in here a few weeks ago and he said and Dan the other thing that that foam does is it prevents condensate buildup in that gap because 10 years from now if you're building up condensate in this gap it'll all rot out mm -hmm. and so so we what we need to be doing again coming back to everything we're doing is designed so that we minimize the risk of any product issues when it gets to the field. Right? Just absolutely. As we're going out, I will point out too that that door, uh, you'll notice a little lip on this side of it. That is a pan. All of our exterior doors have a pan under them. And that's so that if water gets past the threshold, instead of having a creeping puddle into the house, it's gonna hit the pan, be directed out and in a way. So again, these are just the types of things, you only get one shot to put in the pan, one shot to do the, the low expansive force foam, one shot to, to flash it correctly. Yeah, because once it's all closed up, nobody sees that, but it makes a huge difference in the performance of the house and also, we sleep better because we know that we don't have to yeah. go out and fix it. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing I really like about your house design is I like the silver scooter in there. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I also like the electrical, and I don't know if it's both things I saw, but it's an All right, as you can see behind me, we are now on site at one of their houses, and we're gonna go ahead and take a walk through. Look at somewhere. I'm gonna turn you around here in a minute so y'all can see it real good. But yeah, we got one of their models that they they put on a property over here near the lake. But um, let's go see what they're talking about in here. Lego. Beautiful door. <laughs> Many bedrooms. No, we did, bedrooms. We did have oh, bedrooms. significant advantages one or two on this. <laughs> and the advantage we had, one, was it was our team doing the work. Um, number one. Number two is that for all of the ceiling, we did the shiplap, we painted all of that in the shop and just brought it out and installed it. So we didn't have to do drywall on the ceiling, just on the walls. Um, so if you think about it, this is, when we were talking about the 1212K, where you raise the roof and you finish it upstairs, this is in essence the same sort of thing, except that over there is finished space in that loft, and this is just open space up here. So, but of course everything from the 10 foot line down, uh, was done in the plan. Let me make one other comment too about this. You'll notice that we have a concrete porch floor there and the concrete in the back room if you have a chance to look. How did we do that? We temp framed those, set them on the foundation, and then took out the temp framing form for the concrete floor and poured the concrete so that it looks just like everything else. This particular house is on a conditioned crawl space. Uh, which I highly recommend. The air handler is in the crawl space and the perimeter of the crawl space is insulated. The floor is not insulated. So the air handler, in addition to putting air into the house, has one supply in the crawl space. So the crawl space is positively pressurized with fresh air. 
And so it feels just like in here, it feels like the same down there. Uh, but it gives you this nice crawl space, not dank, musty, all like that. So, questions? <clears throat> Do go into the primary bathroom and you can see the tile work in there. It only rode four miles, not all the way off. <laughs>
Yeah. That's what they say. 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 That